welcome everybody. We're at Burlington Hotel this afternoon. Um, and of course, thank you to the Burlington Hotel for letting us use their venue this afternoon. Uh, we're with Chris Agutta. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Yeah, yeah, all good, yeah. yeah. Basically, we know Chris is a coach, but we thought what we do is we try and get to know him more as a person this afternoon. So thank you for agreeing to do this, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, pleasure. Welcome. So anyway, straight, straight off the bat, when you've got spare time, what do you enjoy doing? Oh, uh, in the garden. In the garden. That's what that's what I um, that's what I do to be honest. So uh, quite fortunate that got a, got a nice big space out the back of the house and um, yeah, sort of. That's the only place really where I switch off. So other than if I'm not out there cutting the grass and I mean I've got a, quite a um, low profile Instagram account and people often don't realise it's me and I'm posting plants and flowers and all sorts of stuff and my wife laughs at me but yeah, that's where I sort of retreat to but other than uh, uh, other than the garden it's just football to be honest and the, and the odd dog walk as well yeah, right. yeah the odd okay. dog walk yeah. um, how do you charge per round it's a sort of a people's garden <laughs> I, I enjoy it but not that much <laughs> yeah fair enough so um What's your favourite holiday destination? Uh, oh, um, we went to Malaysia uh, a few years ago. So we had a family friend that um, emigrated out there, um, and so we ended up we ended up going out there for well, we done two weeks in Penang in Malaysia, which was lovely, and then we uh, went to Thailand for a few days as well. So Asia is as a continent it's beautiful so uh, we really enjoyed it out there it wasn't just um, obviously the sights and the scenery it was just the lifestyle really it was and the people were so friendly so yeah if I, if I had another uh, opportunity to go back there which I'm sure we will at some point and we definitely will take that okay so we're going on to diet now, so. diet oh Christ so, yeah, yeah. apologies yeah <laughs> it's got worse since I've got come to Worthing because I'm getting home later so yeah late night stop offs at garages at the minute yeah so, what's your what's your favourite food? Um, yeah, bread. Probably a curry, I'd say. Yeah, it's a good uh, man. Yeah, good probably man. a curry and tikka masala, maybe. Whether that counts as a full blown curry, no, but no, no, no not quite. Birmingham, so. All right, yeah. So, uh, well, it's better than the korma. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Um, problem problem is, I I tend to if I like something, I tend to eat it to excess. So you get into that routine of we'll have a curry Friday. Saturday and then before you know it, it feels like every day of the week so um, but yeah no if I if I had a choice it would be curry definitely what sides with it oh uh, Bombay potatoes um, oh sagaloo um, what's the what's the what's the cheesy one as well there's you, oh paneer yeah, sag paneer. Yeah. Are you not so sure no. about that? No, no that's all right. I'm allergic to cheese. So. Oh, right, okay. So yeah. That's a conversation killer, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that, that tends to be the go-to. Peshwari naan as well. So yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, my wife is in charge of ordering the food though. Oh yeah, onion barges, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the greasier the better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, favourite movie? Uh, oh. Oh, I guess they're like funny tips. Probably Moneyball. Have you seen that with Brad Pitt? Uh, years ago, it's quite yeah, an old film. Yeah, it is quite an old film, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's about baseball and um, it's basically how they um, go down a different road to the traditional scouting road. They start to use data and stuff like that. I think to the um, average person, it's probably a really boring selection, but I've probably watched that film. You know, you have a film that yeah. you just go, got a bit of time, I'm going to, you know, you got... You're doing a bit of work, but a bit of background noise. I'd rather uh, stick that on than Sky Sports News these days. So I watch that a lot. Um, other films I like, uh, Saving Private Ryan. I like a war film as well. So yeah, classic, yeah. classic. Favorite TV series? Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah no course. brainer. Yeah. House and Dragons good as well. Yeah, so. been watching that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very good. Yeah, yeah I'm waiting for the whole set. So I can watch it all again. Yeah, my, my mother and father-in-law do that a lot, so I'm sort of trying not to ruin it, but it's also part of the fun, like letting out little spoilers and yeah, yeah. but no, it's, um, yeah, no, I, I tend to watch it uh, weekly as well, so every every Monday, because uh, I start a little bit later on a Monday, so I watch that after I walk the dog, walk the plants, and I'll put House of the Dragon on late Monday morning, then come into work, so yeah, no, that's good. My favourite band? Oh. Uh, I like Mumford and Sons. Okay. They're good. Uh, I've got quite a broad 
broad choice of music. Yeah, I, it, it can. The playlist is quite varied. Yes. It, it depends. So, um, but if I had to choose one month, then Sons would be up there. Yeah. Okay. Best yeah. concert you've been to? Uh, Biffy Clyro at the O2. That was very good. Um, I just enjoyed it. It was just straight through. There was no big long interval in between. It was felt like about an hour and fifteen minutes and done and dusted that was it so yeah no that was that's probably the best concert i've been to okay and if you had to pick a song you could sing word for word oh. what would you play <laughs> i wouldn't recommend that <laughs> um cool. oh, i could get shot down there because there's, there's not many songs i know word for word um you probably have an edge initiation there no 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 well <laughs> we, funnily enough we've tried to scrap that um process i quite like the journey that's a good one uh, don't stop believing that's probably yeah. one that i was if I'd had a few drinks, I'd probably go down that road, maybe. Okay, we'll sort that out. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be one of the later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'd do that on the coach on the way home sometime. Yeah. What was your first car? Um, uh, Ford Escort. Slap. Was it really? Yeah. yeah. Ford Escort, which I drove terribly. Um, yeah, Ford Escort. Yeah. Do you remember the registration plate? Oh, God, no. no I, I could barely know my own registration plate, let alone back then, no. Uh, Mine was M7 S7 VSN. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, yeah. You obviously enjoyed that vehicle then. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I just passed my test and I got handed the brand new car from work. Oh, wow. I just went, there's your key to your passenger test. You're a rep, man. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I wasn't car. trusted with a brand new car. Rightly so as well, because I crashed the Escort. So, yeah. You crashed it once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what do you drive at the moment? Ford Fiesta. <laughs> yeah, standard, yeah. yeah. Brilliant standard. car. That got me to... Because um, I went down the road of having a nice car, um, my last one, but it was a nightmare. And then when it when it needs fixing, it costs a million and one pounds. So yeah. no, Ford Fiesta has been good. It's it done a lot of miles as well. So um, that got me up and down to Stevenage, uh, Touchwood with wherever it may be. Yeah, um, with no no issues and so far kind of worthy. It's been good as gold as well. So yeah. So. Where did you actually come from? Live, live um, Bexhill. Oh, you live in Bexhill? Bexhill, yeah. So, uh, it's yeah, it's an uh, hour and 15 um, on a steady run. If Late at night can be a little bit quicker, but yeah, no. But it's um, it's, it's, it's fine until you get too worthy. And then you, you, oh, yeah, it just stops. Them, yeah, we've done that today, actually, which was uh, frustrating. So, yeah, it only but, takes 20 minutes to get out of work. Yeah, yeah well, it's just, you just think, where's that traffic come from? But surely they'd sort that bottleneck out as they're going on towards... You'd think so. Yeah, yeah, you'd think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the best advice you've wow. ever received and who gave it to you? Oh, um, I've been lucky, really. I've, I've, I've sort of been able to have a few people as mentors and people to uh, give me advice over the years. Um, I've probably had quite a few bits. Um, this guy called Steve Salis, who um, who helped me in the first in my first managerial role at Hastings, because um, we were, to be honest, when you're stepping into a new role and it's the first time I manage, your confidence is on the floor, or you're nervous and you're worried about whether or not you're going to have success, and um, you think, oh, are you going to be good enough? And are you going to be the Hastings manager? That never wins a game. All those sorts of things you worry about. And um, and he just said some really simple things. So he said, you know, what do you want your Hastings United team to look like in a year's time? And pick a team based on that. So it was all very much around process rather than the short term. What does the long term look like? And if we get the short term processes right, you'll get the, the outcomes you want. Um, that was a really good bit of advice. Um, in terms of team selection, he said, um, he said a few things actually. He said in terms of team selection and players that you sign, if they can't run or don't want to run, don't sign them. Um, and I've sort of stood by that. If you're going to make mistakes, make sure that they're your own and not somebody else's. Um, that was that was somebody completely different as well. Um, just that was just around coaching. I can always remember I, I sort of had some advice, and I know what I was saying. Don't take on board advice, but I had a feeling around delivering a certain type of practice or session, and. Um, and I ended up taking on board the advice and it was one of the worst sessions I've ever delivered. And I sort of thought to myself, well, you know, if you're going to make mistakes, make sure they're yours and not somebody else's. And um, yeah, no, I've, I've been lucky, really. I've had a lot of good people to sort of lean on and, and uh, uh, you know, sort of help, help guide me. So, yeah, no, 
that's uh, there's loads more that I could go to, but they're probably the standout bits. Oh, actually, another one. I got it out of a book. It was um, it was Legacy uh, about New Zealand All Black, uh, All Blacks, and it said um, yes. lay seeds to trees that you may never see grow. So it was around try and do what's best for the organisation rather because obviously like first team football can be pretty short term and you can often only look at the next game or the next six weeks or the next six months rather than thinking about actually if we can put in place really good processes or give players exposure in the short term they might not be ready now but longer term we could have a Brad Dollahan or another top player that's coming through or a process or putting in place infrastructure that sees the club in a better position longer term. So that that's something I sort of live by as well. Okay. You have a favourite quote or quote sort of thing. Yeah, that that would be it. That would that would be up there. Um, yeah, no, I, th I think that's I think that's important. Um, yeah, lay seeds to trees that you may never see grow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, the next, next one goes, goes into that uh, yeah. as well. What's your favourite book or a book to say that significant impact on you? Yeah, Legacy was a brilliant book. Um, loads of coaching books. Uh, I've read like the uh, Pep Guardiola books rather predictably. Uh, they're very good by Marty uh, Perenal. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, they were very good books. Um, there's another book by Jed Davis uh, around coaching positional play. That's quite coach heavy. Uh, it was a very good book. Uh, I'm trying to think of something a bit more interesting. Uh, they're all football, to be honest. Inverting the pyramid, that was a bit heavy. That was Jonathan Davis, that was good. Um, a zonal marking as well. I and mean, it wasn't just about zonal marking, by the way. Uh, that was by Michael Cox. That's a very good book as well. It just, just basically speaks about the evolution of football tactics and yeah, n nothing overly exciting, to be honest. Legacy is definitely the best one, though. All sporting books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, right, this, this is a good one. Mm. If you could have dinner with any three celebrities, oh. dead or alive, well, who would they be? Why? That's a hell of a question, that is. Um, you might have to edit this because there's going to be a long delay, I think, on the answer to that call. I would love to... I'd love to sit down with Diego Maradona. I think some of the stories he'd be able to tell, not just the football stuff, like the lifestyle, that would be unbelievable. Um, try not just to go down the football road. Ah, oh, Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones. If I, if I have like a, um, a coaching idol, if you like, or role model, um, Eddie Jones would be up there. I just think he talks about uh, elite sport with such clarity. He must be so knowledgeable. Do you know what I mean? Like when you can distill something down to such simple terms and real clarity you go well he must know his stuff i think whereas sometimes people use long words and it sounds really complicated but it's actually you probably don't understand it well enough so eddie jones i think uh would be a brilliant would be a brilliant person to sit down with uh so eddie jones paul gas uh no diego maradona it was gas or maradona that's what i was thinking <laughs> i'll go maradona um i'd have to go johan cruyff yeah yeah he would be up there in terms of He's, again, similar to Eddie Jones in terms of how... Because you know you see all the quotes from yeah. Johan Cruyff. Again, I think it's been able to take such complex ideas and put them into such clear sentences just shows yeah. the sort of incredible knowledge he has. So uh, I'd just sit there and listen to them three, which would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, if you could have any super power, what would it be and why? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Well, probably a couple. Uh, it would be being able to disappear if you lose a game of football. I would take that. Be invisibility. In, oh, invisibility. That would be up there. Um, I, I struggle with losing games. I hate it. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I hate losing more than I enjoy winning, to be honest. That would be there. Um, I'd love to be able to uh, tell the future as well, because then it wouldn't worry so much about three points or not. Yeah. Or I won't accept that. Well, yeah, 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 cool, yeah, yeah. Only getting in the playoffs, or, yeah, let down, yeah. <laughs> Has anyone living or dead influenced you in the way you live your life? Absolutely. Yeah, probably, it's probably maybe a bit too serious, but um, my, my dad, for one, 
um, because if I'm being brutally honest, he taught me how not to live my life. Uh, so he, he was a role model, but uh, not a role model in the sense that he's someone that you'd look up to. It's someone you'd actually go, well, I don't really want to be like that type of person. Um, and then my wife, she's been, uh, she's been incredible to be honest. So if I, because I, I can remember when I, years ago, I, I coached alongside, I'd done coaching alongside working in engineering. Uh, that was my, that was my job as, as well as playing at the time. And uh, it was a good job, like mechanical engineering, and it was, I think I had a pretty good um, pathway, career pathway. And uh, I can remember my wife was pregnant and we were planning to get married. And then I left my job, went into uh, football coaching full time, which paid probably a quarter of the wages that engineering did. Um, and my wife just sort of accepted it and after, after a heavy ear bashing, of course. Um, and she just supported me all the way, to be honest, uh, and that enabled me to um, sort of chase my dreams, really. So she's, uh, she's integral to everything I've done. Good talk. Uh, um, biggest phobia? Oh, deep water. Okay. I can't swim. Uh, I can't swim. So even when I was, uh, when I was younger, uh, I used to, I used to go in a swimming pool and they used to like panic and have mad nosebleeds and stuff like that. And rather than, this was when I was really young and rather than my mum keep chucking me in there and I never really got over it. So I never learned to swim. Um, it did lead to much amusement to my wife because when I was 20, probably 23, she tried to teach me to swim, um, but she was half taking the, taking the mick, I think, because she threw about 85, uh, inflatables at me and what the the long sort of uh, uh, floats you can get. A snaky type thing. Yeah, basically she, she threw about 50 of them at me so I, I looked like, yeah, ridiculous and then trying to learn to swim around the swimming pool with a load of other people looking at me, why is this grown man yeah. basically built a raft so of floats? Like yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, deep water, my worst nightmare is being chucked out there in deep water, horrendous, yeah. What's your favourite sport other than football? Ooh, um, I like rugby. Uh, I do like rugby, but that that's more... I like rugby and basketball, but to be honest, that's more because I think there's a lot of um, ideas that can transfer across to football. So that's more of a professional thing. So I watch a, a lot of rugby and basketball for those reasons. Um, purely sitting down and enjoying it, uh, probably cricket. I could I could sit there and watch Test cricket for hours. Five days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife look at me like, "What are you doing?" Um, but yeah, I, that's some of the best sport I've seen. Obviously, not Test cricket, but with Ben Stokes and yeah, that uh, was in New Zealand, wasn't it? And it was, uh, yeah, that was incredible. So uh, yeah, probably cricket. Yeah. Favorite thing about being a football manager? Um, Oh, winning's pretty good. Yeah, winning's pretty good. I think um, seeing your ideas or some of your ideas um, be delivered on the pitch by a group of players, sort of knowing that you've had an influence on that, um, which culminates in what I view as brilliant football, effective football, and then if you can get the result off the back of that, even better. Um, I enjoy the battle as well in terms of with the with the opposition manager, like the tactical battle. So at the minute we're in pre-season and it's, you don't know what the opposition's gonna do and you know you, you haven't had any opposition scouting, so it's a bit false. But I like it when, for example, like Western Supermare, watching them, preparing for them and trying to come up with a, a bit of a plan to, to pull them apart and stop them hurting us. So that's, that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll try. Yeah, yeah, no. So we've got plenty of opportunity with six away games as well. So, yeah, yeah. 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 How do you motivate players after a loss? Saying you've had a big loss away from home. Um, I think it goes back to the importance of recruitment. Because I think if you get the right people in, there's not, there's not, um, there's not sort of 
there's not too much motivation that you need to do, um, to be honest. I think, again, if you get the right people in the building, that, that sort of looks after itself. Um, I think as well, I think it's important you look at, you can win games of football and be terrible, whereas you can lose games of football and be very good. I think ultimately, like, if you look at the performance and you, if you get that right more often than not, you'll, you'll pick up more points. I can remember my, my return to Hastings last year. First, we won the first six games, but we were terrible and we could have lost those first six games. Whereas towards the back end of the year, for example, we played Wingate and Finchley who were fourth and they were up there and we absolutely pummeled them and we drew 2-2. Two -two. So it, it was one of them. I was, I was more disappointed after we won those games versus the 2-2. Two -two. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, long answer really. I think get recruitment right and be be um, focusing on the performance and then you'll get the, the outcome more often than not. So it leads into that question really. How do you approach the team, team chemistry and camaraderie? Um, again, I think if you get good people in the building, uh, uh, good honest people that work hard, um, I think that goes a long, long way. Um, and Touchwood, we've always we've always done that pretty well. Um, very rarely have we brought people into an environment where they're going to have a negative influence. I think as well, it's that that pack mentality. Because if you get enough good people, if you do get someone that maybe doesn't fit, they soon get pushed out the door by by the group. Um, um, and in terms of chemistry, I, I've seen it probably more. Similar to when I was at Stevenage, actually, because of the level of player, the level of players higher, half the battle is not getting in the player's way. So there's some things that Tommy Willard and, and Danny Cashman that do that I can't, you know. And there was players at Stevenage that they do things, I think, well, oh, that's not in the textbook. Yeah. So I think half the battle is letting them yeah, find their own way and then balancing off against that. So. Yeah. Um, I know it sounds a bit cheesy, it's a bit like an orchestra. You've got your, you know, your violinists and your, your creative players, but also you need the bass drummer at the back holding it all together, and which is why Glenn Ray and Kane Wills and these guys are so important because they give us a platform to then go and, uh, for Cash and Co to go and do what they do. Okay. What piece of advice would you give to aspiring football managers? Uh, don't do it, no. Um, yeah. Um, it's all right on the PC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Football manager, yeah. Um, uh, to be honest, it would just be coaching-wise. You got to, you got to get out there and you've got to do an awful lot for free first and foremost. I think that's that's a big thing. Is um, I think there's a lot of people that um, want to get paid, want to get paid really well without necessarily doing the hard miles and going to watch sessions for free and um, I think that would be the best advice is get yourself out there um, knock on doors try you know watch sessions watch coaches work um, and, it, and it's not so much the it's not so much the sort of the learning that you get on courses and it's more the informal stuff where you go and pursue the knowledge yourself as I say going to watch other coaches work and um, so yeah I think if you want to get to a place where you are a first team manager, I think you need to go there as armed as possible. And a big part of that is is getting out there and and uh, pursuing your own knowledge rather than swallowing a textbook. What's the one goal you're determined to achieve with Irving Football Club? No pressure. No. Um, well, you know, I mean, from my perspective, I've I've worked in full time football for majority of the last sort of five six seven years and I want to get back there so um, you know, you want to you want to get the club to the National League like for, for me it, can can we take the club to a place where it's never been before um, that's that's got to be the aim I mean I could sit here and give the more PC answer and talk about development and progress and but, you know let's not dress it up, like that's, that's where the club wants to go, that's where all of the, the, the work off the pitch is, is directing the club towards, the, the owners are very ambitious and you know, from, a, from a coaching perspective the, you want to you get back to that level and I look at the players and you've got likes of so Danny Cashman and Tommy Willard, these guys have, have, are at Worthing and, you know, they're, but they've got ambitions of going to, going to play full-time professional football so that's, that's got to be the aim.
Do you have any premature rituals or superstitions? Oh, I'm incredibly superstitious, yeah. Are you really? Yeah, I'm, I'm a nightmare for it. I can remember um, at a previous club, we we integrated the academy coaches into the first team setup, so they would basically work on a rotor as part of their development to spend time with the first team. And we had an away game, and um, the coach that was with us sat on the coach in my seat. And I, I was too polite to say move, and we lost the game, and we got knocked out of the cup. And I just said to him, one or two things, either you're never coming back or don't ever sit there again. So, um, yeah, that was something. Uh, just silly, thing, silly things, really. It could be the, the stupidest things, like not shaving until you win a game of football. Like just ridiculous stuff, which actually has zero relevance uh, to the game but you know you do whatever you need to do I mean we again at a previous club we used to play a certain song before every game um, you know it's touch wood like on the shaving front we've always won quite a lot so my, otherwise my wife would be fuming with me so I've always shaved quite regularly so um, yeah my, my thing is is you want to go into every game knowing that you've done absolutely everything to to try and prepare as best as possible so and ultimately as well I'll do whatever it takes to try and win that game so or try and help the team win the game What's the best game of football that you've ever watched live? Uh, or either your teams or anybody else's? Um, I was at Euro 96 England Holland that was that was amazing that was amazing yeah um, that's probably the best game I've not directly been involved in. Uh, best game I've ever been involved in was an FA Trophy game against Leeston away, uh, where we won 4-3 and finished the game with eight players. Uh, our goalkeeper got sent off and our club captain went in goal. And uh, we changed formation about 10 times in the game. Just as we got more players sent off, we just changed. That was that was crazy. So it was away from home, uh, a couple of hours away. So you imagine what the journey was like on the way home. That was that was pretty good. Um, but it, you know, we were one 0 up. Then we went two one down, and then we quickly went four two up just after half time. Then our goalkeeper got sent off for a handball outside the box, which later got rescinded. So brilliant match officiating again. Yeah, perfect. Started, well, no comment. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that a lot this year, I'm sure. Or well, hopefully not. Um, and then we had one lad sent off for time wasting and then another player sent off for time wasting. And uh, yeah, we. And I, I can remember one of the players saying every time they sort of, they, you know, was in the shower having been sent off and every time they sort of went back into the change room, another player kept coming in. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. So, and I can... I can remember being at the bottom of a bundle, shaking the other manager's hand at the time because it was like winning the game was massive. So, and then on the way home, the coach journey that was good, and then chipping them in the FA Cup was good as well. So we knocked them out. They were a couple of leagues above us. That was good. Um, and again, funny story: the night before, I, I was always big on trusting the players, and I still am. Right, so I said to them, "You know, you have an overnight. Uh, yeah. There's often." I've got to be in bed at this time, we've got to do this, this and this. And I always used to say, well, do what you'd normally do. So if you go out and have 10 pints before a game and you play well on a Saturday, well, you have your routine, I, I trust you. And uh, one of the play, and we always used to name the squad really, really early. And uh, one of the players that wasn't starting went out and uh, got in at the early hours, um, had a really good night and then uh, it was uh, funny enough. It was Lloyd Dawes who got injured in the warm up. Oh, we know he was. Yeah, yeah, Dawes. Yeah, yeah, what a character. He he got injured in the warm up. So the lad that went out the night before had to start, and uh, feeling worse for where he scored the winner. So it was, you just couldn't write it. But he said I had to play well because I knew the consequences if I didn't. So yeah, that was that was a brilliant day as well. If you could manage any any other sport professionally, what would it be? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I think um, probably basketball because I enjoy it. Uh, and again, I think there's a, a real crossover. 
I think American football as well because I think you can have a, such a huge influence on it in terms of from the sideline in terms of plays and stuff like that I think that would be pretty in terms of being able to really impact it well or not so well uh, yeah I think American football would be pretty good Who's your favourite football player growing up? Uh, Dennis Bergkamp and why? Uh, Arsenal fan and uh, I, one of the first games I can remember was um it was Arsenal versus Southampton and he'd not long signed from Inter Milan and he was getting a bit of stick and then he scored two goals against Southampton and that sort of that made me think oh he's a good player um, I loved Emmanuel Petit as well um, like left footed uh, big man like just always looked like he had time on the ball like calm and composed but he was physically really combative you know you wouldn't want to play against him so not only could he play he was like control the game but equally when it got a bit rough and ready he was he was a big presence in there him and Vieira um, yeah they were love Maradona as well most important lesson football has taught you oh. um, yeah, it's interesting it's the classic not too high when you win not too low when you lose but because I because but I, I, I've probably come away from that now a little bit because I, because in my first year I got to the uh, we got to the playoff semi-final and we lost to a 119th minute extra time penalty. And Gary Elphick actually thanks Gaz uh, he got lined up one v one the quick centre forward in the 119th minute and uh, he he done what he needed to do and cleaned him out and gave away a penalty and. Uh, yeah, and but what we'd done that year was every win we really celebrated it. I mean, we really celebrated it. It was, you know, we was you know, good two or three days of enjoying it, and uh, and you got to the end of the season, you just felt what was it for? But then the next year when we uh, we finished top on COVID, and then the year after we finished top on COVID, I was a lot more uh, restrained, and it was more relief. Um, but I sort of come back round to thinking of you got to enjoy what you do so you're probably finding a balance between not too high when you win and not too low when you lose but I think that's also one of the things that makes us successful as well though because you know I, I hate losing and you know we'll do whatever it takes to make sure that doesn't happen How do you handle the pressure that comes with being a manager? Um you got to ignore a fair chunk of the noise for one. Um, that, that's probably quite an important one, isn't it? Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, it is, yeah. But equally, it, you know, you, you've got an ego and you want to be the main man and you want to be the manager, you want to be the number one. That's part of what comes with the gig. Um, so, you know, you, you want the pats on the back when you win. You've got to take the... Yeah, 100%. Um, well, to be honest, like pressure-wise, there's no bigger pressure than I put on myself. So you could put 50,000 people out there and it, the pressure I put on myself is, you know, like when you're talking about biggest fear earlier or biggest phobia, we spoke about being in the middle of the ocean. If I'm being honest, it's probably failure. Like for me, I, I can't, it can't happen. Like it's not, I like, can't fail. Like that's, that's, that's probably my biggest fear in reality and that's probably a big driver to me coping with the pressure because the pressure I put on myself is, is is massive compared to what can come from externally. Right, some, some nice little simple ones. Yeah, yeah no, sorry, yeah. It was, it was, that wasn't too heavy, was it? No, no. no it was not. What music do you listen to before a match? Um, just whatever I'm interested in. Well, yeah, no, well, yeah, no, I wouldn't listen to some of that. Christ. Yeah, uh, it's a tough. Well, it's, no, Joel, Joel's Joel's alright, to be fair. I mean Taylor Taylor Seymour's um whilst he's been in with us pre season, he's he's been pretty good round it. I mean the Trialist T. Yeah, Trialist T, yeah. T S E Y M O U R, yeah. Um yeah. Um yeah, to be honest, the Last uh, last time at Hastings, the music was horrendous, and I used to go in there and I used to say, "No wonder you lot start slow because this is you want to go to sleep listening to it. It's awful." Um, but no, the, the the worthy music is pretty decent, to be fair. Um, but we we had when when I was at Hastings before with Gaz and uh, and Stoney and those guys and Ben Pope and Dorsey, 
Um, because we, oh, it sounds a bit cheesy again, but because we didn't really lose, we had this um, bit of Remember the Titans like vibe, you know, the film Remember the Titans. So there was a lot of um, old school music in there, a lot of uh, Marvin Gaye and that, that type of music in there. And um, we sort of, the lads liked it, but also we played on that theme of, you know, we're not going to get beat. And it was that sort of, as I said, because we went so long without losing, it was uh, it sort of fit into the narrative of the team as well. So um, now at the minute, um, uh, I quite like uh, Paint It Black uh, by Rolling Stones. That's pretty good. That's a, that's a good song. Um, yeah, varied, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. 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 Depends what my wife is prepared to part with at eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. So, yeah. Okay. Right, World Cup or Champions League? Uh, Champions League. Really? In terms of, as a... What, yeah, would, what would you prefer? To no, Champions League, yeah. I think Champions League's the pinnacle of the game, in terms of level. I think prestige is obviously World Cup, but I think in terms of the level, and, and I think winning a, a Champions League is probably harder to do than winning a World Cup. And last one, this is more pointed to, sort of towards a player. Yeah. So, someone in your team. Yeah. What would you rather than get? A goal or two assists? Or two assists. Kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what. That's why we've we said to lads about goal contributions. You know. So just as well, Wally Pierce had nearly seventy of them last year. So great. Yeah. Not too many to replace. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Cheers, Ollie. Nice, nice easy job. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, we'll get there. Yeah. Anyway, Aggie, um, we're all done. Thanks ever oh, so much brilliant. for doing this. Obviously, we've had Jack Williams in charge of the media team, yep. Miles doing the filming for The us. main men, the main men. The main yeah, men yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah brilliant, yeah. They've got it edited all together, yeah. so I wish them luck. Well, they're making us look good. That's, yeah. the, that's the best bit. Yeah. So, so cheers, Aggie. No pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.